Good Sunday evening, everybody, live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik in the News Channel 3 studios down by the Mississippi River. And so far tonight, decently quiet, beautiful sunset out there for this evening and not seeing too much of any other major problems for tonight. We do have an approaching cold front, more chances of showers and thunderstorms heading on through as we go into tomorrow. Could be a problem for the commute to and from work and school tomorrow, so keep that in mind if you're going to be traveling out there. And again, not looking too much like the calendar should be looking where it comes to temperatures across the Mid-South, so little, if anything, helping out there. If you've never been here before, this is our online video weather blog. Your opportunity to chime in and see what's going on with the forecast which is in the blue bar scrolling by here. Also, again, available here at wreg.com slash weather. As we go into a new season, we'll be looking again for some pretty warm conditions out there into the next couple of days, so not really helping out anything in the way of cooling things off anytime soon. And again, a possibility of some less hot weather in the far future. We'll talk about that coming up here in just a little bit. Drop your location and whatever weather reports you've got into the comments section and give us an idea as to what it looks like in your neck of the woods. Here in downtown, again, it's decently dry and looks like it's going to continue to be that way throughout the rest of the evening. So for tonight, again, not really looking at too much to worry about, but we will see more chances of rainfall out there, at least more than we've seen in a while. There are burn bans across portions of the Mid-South area, Lee County, Arkansas specifically. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit. Less than a day to go. Matter of fact, just about six hours and change until the change in season. As we go toward the autumn equinox, that starts tomorrow morning, Monday morning at 2.50 a.m., and we'll be into our next season. So we're almost there, but unfortunately the calendar is not going to be cooperating anytime soon as we see some pretty warm conditions uh, into and around the Mid-South for the next couple of days. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Not too bad downtown, and visibility is good. Both lit up bridges doing their things, Mighty Lights, the I-40 bridge on around the area of Mud Island, and just south of there, just outside the News Channel 3 studio steps, uh, Big River Crossing lit up quite nicely, and again, the lights of West Memphis, Arkansas, less in the way of pollutants any time across the Mid-South area for right now, but again, we're going to continue to see the potential for maybe some more pollutants stacking up in the atmosphere toward the end of this week as high pressure comes in and does a very good job of sticking around and keeping things very much on the warm side for right now. So we could see, again, the possibility of that uh, into and around the area for later on. Here's what it looks like for overnight. New cold front approaching the area, and we could be seeing, again, the possibility of some showers and thunderstorms developing overnight, moving from northwest to southeast, and temperatures by tomorrow morning right around daybreak not going to be that low, only back in the mid-70s. So continuing to see that very warm pattern across much of the Mid-South as we get into around the early portions of this next week. But some changes coming up, and we'll talk about that in just a little while. Five degrees away from a record high temperature today, well above where we should be for this time of the year. 83 degrees is our average high temperature. Normal low at this time of the year, 62, and this is one of the coolest numbers, believe it or not, that we've seen in quite some time. Nowhere near the record low, 42, which was last set back in 1983. We are still very well above normal for precipitation for the year, but it's been days since we've seen a decent amount of rainfall out there to at least settle the dust. Hopefully that will be coming our way relatively soon. Oxford, Mississippi, decently calm and quiet, not doing too bad on the humidity. 77 degrees, partly to mostly cloudy skies at this time. Southerly winds have been pretty nice out of the south at about 6 miles per hour into and around Oxford at this point in time. We do have this next cold front on the way as we head into the rest of the forecast for later on tonight. And again, more chances of showers and thunderstorms uh, into and around the area. Most of what we're going to be looking for is going to be north of the Arkansas-Missouri state line all the way up into the Great Lakes. So if you're heading anywhere to, say, uh, Paducah, St. Louis, Chicago, Springfield, Columbia, Rolla in the next several hours, you may be running into more of those showers out there. This cold front coming on through, and again, limited on the moisture for right now, but by tomorrow morning, we'll be looking for the potential of more chances of showers and thunderstorms uh, into and around the area, but nothing showing up right now in the Mid-South on Storm Tracker 3S radar, at least at about eight minutes past about eight o'clock or so. 
and continuing again to see clean sweeps. Probably after midnight, that'll be our best chance of getting some rainfall in here. Toasty across the area. Temperatures on live real-time weather net 3 back in the lower to mid-80s. And those winds out of the southeast to the southwest doing a very good job of, again, stirring things around a little bit. So that's helping to keep things a little bit more comfortable across much of the area. Welcome to everybody who's checking in for tonight. Let's run the numbers and show you what we've got going on into overnight. News Channel 3 at 10, 70s and 80s with those southerly winds continuing the moving lines on screen showing the winds coming in from out of the south southeast about midnight north of i-40 showers making their way into northwest tennessee northeast arkansas still on the warm side out there and by about tomorrow morning about daybreak about the time you're hitting the road for work or school that's where we start to see unfortunately timing wise the possibility of getting some showers and some thunderstorms across the area dropping into the Mid-South right about drive time tomorrow. So definitely want to tune in for Corey Ventura's time saver traffic. And then also again for Todd Demers forecast. He'll have more bright and early starting at 430 tomorrow morning. Chances of showers and thunderstorms continue to overspread the area. As we get into late tomorrow morning, lunchtime, they'll be sticking around for a while. A brief reversal on the winds will be coming in from out of the north, and that will help along with the clouds and the rainfall blocking out a little bit more of the sunshine to keep things a little bit less steamy. But it is still going to be pretty warm out there with numbers back in the mid to upper 80s. Hopefully there's enough rain to cool things off. If there's not, we're going to continue to see the possibility of seeing, again, more potential of just rain, showers, and thunderstorms uh, into and around the area for right now. So that could be a bit of a problem out there. That chance of showers and thunderstorms will continue but dwindle through tomorrow afternoon and evening. As the front that comes through settles down to the south of us, the best possibility of rainfall by Monday night into Tuesday morning will be away from the Mid-South. But we're not done with that front yet. It's going to be coming back our direction, and it looks like we're going to continue to see, again, the potential for some uh, more changes out there in the next couple of days. So for right now, first day of fall, first full day of fall as well. Scattered showers and thunderstorms possible for much of the area as we go throughout the rest of the day. 30%, again, doesn't sound like much, but it's our best chance that we've seen in quite some time. Now, the front stays south of us on Tuesday, so we'll go for variably cloudy skies, partly cloudy at times, mostly cloudy at others. Doubtful we're going to be seeing too much of anything in the way of sunny skies, at least for the earlier part of the week. Now, on Wednesday, this is where things get interesting. The frontal boundary drops south of us again through the next couple of days. Then high pressure comes in from out west, and it's going to turn that front around. It's going to push it back to the north as a warm front. As it does, we're going to be seeing again the potential for, again, much warmer weather coming on through. Remember, first week of autumn shaping up here. Of course, the temperatures don't care one bit about what the calendar says. So, again, feeling more like summer out there. Could be going for some very hot temperatures by the first weekend of autumn. Mid-90s possible as we head into next Sunday. Record-breaking iffy at this point in time, but still possible. And chances of showers and thunderstorms pretty much gone from the forecast. High pressure doing just what its name implies, pushing down toward the atmosphere and overabundance of air, making things very difficult to develop anything in the way of showers and thunderstorms. So that front passing by on Wednesday, that'll be our best chance for anything involving rainfall. After that, looks like little, if anything, shaping up. Now, just beyond this, for the extended forecast right off the edge of this 10-day forecast going about 14 days out into about, say, mid-October, there is that possibility of getting some nicer weather dropping into, dare I say it, the lower 80s, somewhere in there. But for right now, it looks like we're going to be sticking around with some pretty hot conditions out there. Adam Brandis, done with the hot weather. Totally agree with you on that one. Uh, a lot of you out there still loving the heat and humidity. More power to you, but unfortunately, uh, looks like it's about time to kind of get things a little bit quieter in the Mid-South and hopefully a little bit cooler into and around the area for right now. So we could see a bit of a problem there. Rissa, Rissa, getting your emails, uh, getting your information right there about a riot in Somerville. Please send that information to our news desk at news at wreg.com. Uh, or through Facebook, uh, posting it endlessly on here is not really going to uh, help out. This is a weather program. 
Uh, you can get more information again by getting whatever details you've got and sending it directly to our assignment desk. So again, thank you very much for posting about a riot in Somerville, but your best bet is to get more information uh, directly to our news desk. And again, you can call us at 543-2111 uh, uh, to get more information directly to us on there. Or you can email us again at news at wreg.com. Appreciate the fact that there's a riot going on and that's important. But again, reposting it on a weather program, that's not really going to help too much. But thank you very much uh, for letting us know about that. So for right now, let's see, Marilyn Ost Griganti, uh, crazy weather. Well, pretty much normal, unfortunately, at this point in time. Uh, not really changing too much here. No rain tomorrow. Well, there is that 30% chance for right now. But beyond that, there's really not that much going on uh, at this point in time. Outside of that, on Wednesday, and that's going to be about it for the time being at this point in time. Uh, Tasha Johnsey, hope I'm saying that right. Grass is dying, needs some rainfall. A lot of places would uh, agree with you on that. My front lawn is a little bit crispy at this point in time. And Lynn Hodson would love to feel fall weather, staying longer than a few weeks before winter hits us. It does seem to be about maybe two weeks worth of autumn and then straight into winter pretty much out there. And hopefully we get cooled off before Halloween gets here. But that's lurking out there someplace, and I've seen some very hot Halloweens around the Mid-South area. Good news for the Gulf of Mexico. We have nothing brewing at this point in time on the tropics, so good news on that. Uh, again, looking at Tropical Storm Jerry, the sea surface temperatures, the colors you see here, the warmest conditions right over where Jerry is, but above that is some very dry air, so that's sapping Jerry's strength, and winds are at Tropical Storm Strength not going to become a hurricane over the course of the next couple of days anytime soon. Jackie Card, Indian Summer. Uh, technically, no. We're not seeing anything in the way of an Indian Summer just yet. Technically, that means the first warm spell after the first frost kicks in, also known as uh, St. Luke's Summer. And we don't see anything like that at this point in time because we haven't had that first frost yet. So, again, going to have to get some cooler temperatures in here before we start talking about Indian summer sometime soon. Jerry continues to make its way back to the northeast. Might be a problem for Bermuda in the next couple of days. So we'll keep you updated on that. Brand new tropical storm formed overnight. It was Invest 99L. Now Tropical Storm, barely Tropical Storm Karen, making its way through the southern Leeward Islands. And this one also expected to stay at Tropical Storm status. Not good news for Puerto Rico. Looks like it's going to be heading almost right across the island as a direct strike somewhere Tuesday afternoon and evening. But fortunately, it looks like it's going to be staying at Tropical Storm strength. Again, that dry air over that portion of the ocean is doing a good job of sapping the storm strength out there. But we're not done yet. we got more to talk about. Way out into around Western Africa, and this was pretty interesting because the National Hurricane Center usually doesn't start posting about these things until they make their way off the continent and into the ocean. This one started getting notices posted on it before it had left Africa, right about the time it was passing Sierra Leone and heading out into the Atlantic. Invest 90L area of investigation heading into, and again, a very good area for the possibility of development. Good possibility we may see a tropical storm tonight or into early this next week as the storm pulls out into the ocean. This could be our next larger, more powerful storm system. We'll be watching this again with the National Hurricane Center, so stay tuned for more on that. Brian Wilkes, Las Vegas 85, and I'm assuming a humidity of about, what, 5% out there, somewhere in there, the dry heat uh, for right now. Thank you very much uh, for that one. I'm assuming that's Las Vegas, Nevada, not Las Vegas, New Mexico. Beautiful place. I've never been to Las Vegas, uh, Nevada before. Well, I went once, but that was just passing on through on a trip someplace else. Coming up in the next several weeks, National Weather Service in Memphis will be teaching Skywarn spotter training classes. The first class will be this Thursday, Poinsett County, Arkansas, at the Truman, Arkansas Fire Department. Next Monday, not this Monday, but the following Monday, September 30th, Benton County, Tennessee, at Big Sandy, Tennessee Fire Department. Tuesday, October the 1st, Carroll County, Tennessee, at the Emergency Operations Center in Huntington. And Thursday, October 3rd, at 7 p.m., Emergency Operations Center in Jackson, Tennessee, for Madison County. These right here are just the first four meetings 
There's about a baker's dozen of these coming up, and it's your opportunity to learn more about severe weather because we're about to head into storm season number two, and now is the time to get ready for that. These meetings, again, Skywarn volunteers, can keep people like me up to date so I can tell everybody else out in the community what you are seeing by reporting that back to the National Weather Service. So if you would like to become a spotter, we could use you. This is, again, a spotter course, not a chase course. Yes, I know you can read. A lot of people out there don't like me pointing this out, but the important thing is if you want to chase storms, you need to be trained for it by experts. Do not chase storms unless you have been trained by experts, period, end of sentence. Don't argue with me on this. The best thing you can do is to keep your neighborhood safe, your community safe, become a storm spotter, and your information could help save lives. Last about an hour or so, hour and a half, depending on how many questions get asked and answered, and it's totally free, paid for by your tax dollars and my tax dollars. One of the best ways our tax dollars have ever been spent helping people get ready for serious situations out there. So please consider becoming a, a Skywarn Storm Spotter. We could use your help, and there'll be more of them coming up over the next several weeks. Follow along with the National Weather Service on their Twitter page or go directly to their website at weather.gov. Click on the Mid South, and you'll get a listing of all of this, including the ones that are upcoming in the next few days and weeks. Climate strike was last week. What did that have to prove and what is that leading into for the United Nations Climate Summit coming up this week? Well, we talk about that in this week's Your Environment and it's posted right now at our website wreg.com slash weather slash environment. If you'd like to see more about what happened here in Memphis with the climate strike downtown at the Civic Center, we attended that down there to see what went on and more about what's upcoming with Secretary General of the United Nations Antonio Guterres urging governments around the world to take a more firm action where it comes to climate change and helping people to understand more about what it means to keep our planet clean and livable for the next generations out there. So please tune in to our Enviro blog, Your Environment, available right now again at wreg.com slash weather. Okay, one more check into tomorrow morning. More chances of showers and thunderstorms. Not that cool for the Mid-South, as numbers are going to be only dropping for the metro area, lower to mid-70s. Could be a few mid to upper 60s out there, north of I-40, but again, that's going to be about all that we see at this point in time where it comes to cooler weather. Minimal chances of rainfall, more chances of heat and humidity coming our way in the very near future toward the end of the week, so we are just not seeing much of anything out there in the way of relief anytime soon. Wish we had some better news, but for all of right now, we're looking again the possibility to again see what we see, uh, hopefully for some relief coming our way, but not really seeing too much of anything else out there. Uh, Lynn Hodson, we need your help to have our time not to change. If you're speaking about daylight savings time, I totally agree. It's useless. We should get rid of the practice and it doesn't do anything but cause more accidents as people lose sleep. So I'm in favor of that if that's what you're talking about out there. More coming up tonight. We are running a little late thanks to NFL Doubleheader on CBS. We'll be on at least about a half an hour late with the late edition coming up at about 10.30, 10.45, somewhere in there. Questions, concerns, ideas about anything on here? If there's something you'd like to see on here, email me. Let me know. Whatever you want to see. More satellite, more world weather, more climate data. If it's something on here we can fix and bring you back for more, please let me know about that. We'd love to know more about that. So again, austin.onic at wreg.com for more. Stay tuned for more with the late edition of News Channel 3 at 10 coming up later this evening. And of course, Todd Demers has more on your forecast bright and early tomorrow morning on News Channel 3 Daybreak. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee, thank you very much for joining us for tonight. And stay tuned for more with News Channel 3 as we head into the first full week of autumn. Thanks for stopping by.